Hi, I'm Cara Lear from the Yoga Lunchbox, and today we're talking about some of the concepts in my second book, The No More Excuses Guide to Yoga. I want to start with the biggest concept of them all, because it completely underlays everything else that I talk about. What is yoga? Right? What is yoga? Because when I say the word yoga, most people get a mental image of a posture, right? They see their favorite Instagram star show up doing this amazing back bend on the beach looking fabulous. And they think, yeah, that's yoga, man. That posture thing. Well, it's not. And that's the thing, right? Yoga is... It's a state of presence. It's a state of being, right? And the postures that we do are a tool. They're a way that we practice the state of being. So the postures themselves are not the yoga. And in fact, it's completely possible to do the postures and not be in a state of yoga. Okay? This is important because then when you talk about practicing yoga, you're not specifically talking about practicing postures. It means that you are talking about all of the various yogic practices which bring you into a state of yoga or a state of being. And that's complete presence. Okay, that's when you are identified not with your thoughts, but with the field of awareness that underlies your thoughts. Other tools of yoga that you might use to practice yoga would be pranayama or breath work. Chanting, that's a great one. Uh, you might use mudras, hand seals. You might do kriyas. There's also the study of scriptures or the study of the ancient yogic texts. So all of these different methodologies help you to practice yoga. So when I talk about the No More Excuses Guide to Yoga, I'm not talking about the No More Excuses Guide to Physical Postures on the Mat, right? I'm talking about the No More Excuses Guide to the State of Presence that is yoga. So it's a very different thing. Why is this important? Because it means that when you think, well, I want to start practicing yoga, it totally broadens out what that might look like for you. And it means that even though you could be quite sick right now, or maybe you're confined to a wheelchair, there is still a way for you to practice yoga. You might be able to chant, you might be able to do meditation, you might be able to do visualization. So all of those methods can work even when we're ill, or if we're confined to a wheelchair, for example. It's also important because if you don't have that underlying sense of yoga being more than just the postures, it is entirely possible to get on your mat, bend your body into these amazing shapes, and never really be practicing yoga. And you could do that for a few years until you finally tweak and go, oh my god, that's the yoga. So I want to put it right up front so that you know yoga is a state of mind or a state of being I'm not even going to say a state of mind because your mind is not necessarily in that state your being is and the mind is contained within that within that field of awareness so next time you're practicing one of the tools of yoga whether it's postures or breath work or meditation or chanting or studying the text or kriya just remind yourself when you're doing it yoga is a state of being Yoga is the quality of presence I bring to that which I'm doing. I'm Karalia, author of the No More Excuses Guide to Yoga, and you'll find me at the Yoga Lunchbox.